Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. This is Father Jason. I want to speak to the books of Genesis and Isaiah, which for we Eastern Catholics and Eastern Orthodox um, are the source of our uh, liturgical reflection during this time of the year of the Great Fast, Lent. And the, the theme seems to be one that is summed up in our secular phrase, eat or be eaten. You know, the Lord is offering his people the same black and white choice. When we read Isaiah, the first chapter especially, his message points back to the covenant agreement that the Lord God offered the Hebrews, whom Moses eventually led out of Egypt. Keep the covenant, keep the commandments, and enjoy the bounty of the promised land. Or disobey and lose it all. The original covenant God made with Adam and Eve was no different, essentially. They were offered all the delights of paradise and commanded not to eat from one tree. That's in Genesis chapter 2. The original disobedience was motivated, yes, by pride, by gluttony, by distrust, and some of the fathers say it was a mixture of all of the passions and vices. Let's look at the distrust aspect of it. Satan conceived in Eve's heart through his word that God was standing in the way of her happiness, that his God's commandment was not in her best interest, that she could be her own God without God. It's interesting how that's in, 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 in juxtaposition to the archangel Gabriel who conceives in the heart of Mary by the word of greeting and in her womb is conceived the word of God. Saint Ephraim the Syrian speaks about that. In any case, the original sin was an act of eating. That most basic human drive we all have and it nourishes our life and it gratifies our senses and this great fast is an opportunity to work at undoing all the damage of self-gratification and to accept God's lordship in that most basic and elemental area of our daily life, eating. At the root of gluttony is distrust. I distrust that God will provide for me tomorrow, so I'm going to acquire all that I can now because he, my father, will not provide for me tomorrow, so I must accrue in great numbers, all that I need for my stomach today. It's an act of distrust. It's an act also of idolatry, of serving the, the, the gut. The original sin of Adam and Eve has taken root in every aspect of human experience. Sin, which is distrust, disobedience, selfish gratification, pride, this sin is a reality in our world. The prophet Isaiah lists some of the ways sin became normal in Jerusalem of old. Greed and injustice in commerce, in government, and yes, even in worship. Do you think that our world is any better than Isaiah's world? that we have no longer any problems with injustice in business, government, and in worship? Hardly. Isaiah accuses Jerusalem of idolatry. It's just one more version of the original temptation. God's people were tempted by the thought that other gods might be better at feeding them, enriching them, entertaining them, defending them. Our own temptations to abandon the Lord are probably very much the same today. Our ideas about pleasure, success, convenience, comfort may go against the Lord's commandments, and we decide that we know better. What is the Lord's reaction to Jerusalem's corruption and faithfulness? Well, as we read Isaiah, we see that he speaks like a rejected lover. He compares his people to a whore who sells her affections for coin. We will hear this sort of talk throughout the prophecy of Isaiah. The Lord's relationship to his people is compared to a wedding. We see it 
in the book of Revelation. We see it in the Song of Songs and in the Prophets. Our Lord Jesus Christ speaks the same way about his relationship to the church. St. Paul speaks about it in his letter to the Ephesians. Think of all the parables where Jesus compares the kingdom of God to a wedding. Think of the image that we will be focusing on on the first three days of Holy Week. For us, we, we focus on Christ the bridegroom. Crowned, mind you, with thorns, arrayed in royal scarlet, mind you, in mockery, hands bound by his commitment, like we in the East do at the wedding ceremony. The bride and groom have their hands bound. The bridegroom is prepared to sacrifice himself for love of his bride, the church. The night before he consummated that love on the cross, he took bread and said what every bridegroom says, this is my body for you. Isaiah's prophetic word about the Lord who offers to feed his people has been fulfilled far beyond what the prophet himself could have imagined in the Holy Eucharist. Let yourself hunger for the Eucharist until the liturgy of liturgies, which is on the day of his great and second coming, at which time we will no longer need the Eucharist, for we will see him as he is and abide in him and he in us.